Hello! Welcome back to the Range Rover. I feel like I haven't said that in ages. Definitely since last year. Anyway, today isn't about the Range Rover. Uh, today, I am heading towards my first Michelin mission. Uh, more on that in the next video. Uh, but I'm traveling to the south of France for a very special event. As mentioned, the next video will uncover lots more of that soon. But uh, between here and there, it's a lot of traveling. And I realized that I hadn't done a Q&A in quite some time. So submitted uh, the forum on Instagram and in usual fashion, we've had hundreds of questions. Uh, but starting with the first one that caught my eye from Dej V Musil on Instagram, what new car am I most looking forward to this year? I'm not too sure if you're referring to what new car that I'm looking forward to receiving this year or what new car that is launching this year I'm most looking forward to. So I'm gonna answer both of those things. First of all, the car that I'm most looking forward to personally is my Porsche 991 GT3. So that arrives this month. Uh, I actually visited my Porsche dealer yesterday um, and I'm told that it will be here within the next sort of 11 to 12 days. So the excitement on that is palpable. It is super, super high. Uh, I'm not sure if you were a regular follower of this channel last year, but uh, you'll know that I did 20,000 miles in my previous GT3 in just under 12 months. Uh, and the plan is to beat that target and have it be the highest mileage GT3 in the UK by the end of 2018. So yes, that I'm incredibly excited about. Uh, they've managed to push the four liter engine to rev to 9,000 RPM with 500 horsepower, lots more torque. Um, and it basically sounds like the engine has been pulled directly from the cup car and stuck in a road car. And as a result, it sounds ridiculous. And uh, insider information, yes, there is already a Sharkworks exhaust in the pipeline. On the other side, car that I'm most excited about this year is actually the Apollo IE. So for those of you guys who don't know, do you remember the brand Gumpert? And they had the Gumpert Apollo. Um, well, that was uh, bought out by, uh, coincidentally, a friend of mine who, um, and I'm not just saying this because he's a friend, I'm saying this because the Apollo IE is ridiculous. So he bought Gumpert, somewhat rebranded it, uh, scaled back and completely redrew the whole platform from ground up to create what is now the Apollo IE, uh, splicing in a picture here. That car is running a naturally aspirated V12 engine that rumor has it is out of a Ferrari FXX. So you don't need to go too far to figure out how that thing will sound. Um, and styling wise, uh, I haven't seen such revolutionary styling uh, for a very, very long time. Uh, it sort of reminds me a little bit of when the Audi R8 launched. Not how the Audi R8 looks, reminds me of when that launched, everyone was like, good God, that's how you design a car. And the sort of industry stood to attention. Uh, so hopefully this car will also have a sort of knock-on effect and, and get people to pull their finger out and go absolutely wild with design because from an aerodynamic point of view it's still very functional but from an aesthetic point of view your jaw hits the floor and it's it's stunning so yes those two cars are what i'm very much looking forward to this year onwards to the airport it's been a long time since i've flown from liverpool airport for those of you who don't know it's named after john lennon it's the uh, liverpool john lennon airport how cool is that anyway next question if the Lamborghini Aventador had a dual clutch gearbox, would you consider a buying one? If they phoned me to tomorrow, introducing a twin clutch gearbox to the Aventador, I would buy one now. I, I just think it would be so cool to have a, a car that looked that good and sounded that good, but like not dynamically compromised by a, what I class as a substandard gearbox for 2018. So I never got around to actually doing the next question until we have now landed in the south of France. So welcome. Slight turn of events. I have to rent a car. My original car plans have fallen through. I'm gonna go and try and find myself a last minute rental car in Nice. Anyway, uh, next question from, let me just remind myself of the name, Beck Napped. 
What is the thing you hate the most about the speciali? Um, not many things, if I'm honest with you. It's probably the fact that it's so freaking expensive. It's one of those things where every time I want to use the car, I sort of, particularly on track, I sort of opt to ignore the fact that it's, it's so expensive. I think there's this odd, uh, culture around special cars in the car world that you're supposed to keep the miles off them. Which is weird because for me, if it's a special car, that's the car that appreciates in value and so it shouldn't be as damaged by miles as much as normal cars do. Which by and large is actually the case. But still, it's that big chunk of cash and every time I'm like throwing it around a circuit or something, despite the fact that I get track day insurance, always sort of scares me a bit. I'm not sure I hate it for that, but it's not great. There is something just so beautifully timeless about stepping out of the airport at Nice. It's always sunny. There's palm trees in the airport and it's just wonderfully manicured and gorgeous, like coastal sunshine. I never thought I'd be saying this on this channel so soon, but I am looking for a Peugeot. <laughs> yes, I've rented a cheap little Peugeot city car to get myself to Le Castellet. Basically, all of this event has nothing to do with road cars at all. We're going to go and check out some extremely cool race cars. Um, but in the meantime, I've got to rent myself this little car, so I'm trying to find where I am. This place is huge! 2C07. 2C07. Behold the weapon! <laughs> the funniest thing about this is, the reason that we haven't been able to find a supercar in time for this event, is that all of the options that were presented to me were on different tires. And because the event that I'm going to is a Michelin event, it had to be on Michelin tires. Check this out. <laughs> the Peugeot's rocking the Michelins. <laughs> <laughs> the stars have aligned. Perfect little weapon for the job. Whoop. Oh yes. I don't know who drove this last but they must like looking all the way over the steering wheel and over the headlights. Okay, steering column. I love how the uh, steering wheel is directly in front of the speedo. Let me just find out what car I'm in. What car is this? It's a 208. It's a Peugeot 208. <laughs> yes! We are on the continent in a Peugeot. I honestly, just to be here in the sunshine, like what I left the last few months. The UK has been desperate, desperately depressing for weather. It's just been sleet and snow and grime and terribleness. So just to be here, surrounded by palm trees and sunshine, just your whole demeanor is affected. It changes for the better, much better. And ultimately, despite the fact that we are in a chirpy little Peugeot, we are heading for the, the absolute polar opposite high octane supreme world endurance championship racing cars so don't fret mon frere absorb this coastal air and then i shall uh, present the answer to the next question okay next question static.brz on instagram what are you most excited for in 2018? And if you could do one thing, a trip, buying a car, event, or anything else over again, what would it be and why? Hmm. So I'm gonna start with the second part to that question what, with if I could do another thing again, what would it be? Conveniently timed for where we're heading right now. So I'm not sure if I actually mentioned it already in this video. We're in the, the south of France, but I'm driving to Le Castellet, uh, which is about an hour, hour and a half uh, north of Nice to Circuit Paul Ricard. Now, if you f follow this channel regularly, and I know I say that a lot, but I'm referencing a lot. Um, 
you'll know that I drove a Formula One car at Paul Ricard last year. But yes, without a single doubt, um, the thing that I would most like to have a go at again is driving a Formula One car. I had a very short amount of time in that car. Um, the chances are it's never going to happen again. And if it does, I can't imagine it's gonna be in the same capacity as it was when I was fully factory supported by a Renault Formula One team. Um, I still look back at photos of that day just to double check that it actually happened. It was one of the top five moments of my life. Uh, for a petrol head, it was almost life affirming. And if someone gave me the opportunity to do that again, the thing that I would love to do the most is just have enough time to improve and wrap my head further around the capabilities of a formula car, like a proper Formula One car. So the first part of your question, what am I most looking forward to in 2018? Um, there's lots of things actually. Um, with, I'm in the very early stages of the projects that I'm working on with Michelin, uh, but there are some much bigger projects planned with them. The video coming tomorrow, which is more the first video that I'm filming in this series, is somewhat of a warm-up, um, but there's actually some higher production events happening soon. And dare I say it, an actual show is happening. That is somewhat of an exclusive, but there is an actual fully produced show coming soon. I can't give away too much, but it's happening. So that for me is incredible. Um, be sure to stay tuned to this channel and Instagram for more info because I'm very, very excited to be involved in something that is like professionally produced. So next question. Um, this has been asked quite a lot actually. Are you getting a Ferrari 488 Pista? In short, no. The reason being, um, I am not made of money and as much as I would absolutely love a 488 Pista, it would mean selling the Speciali in order to afford it, or not taking the 812 Superfast. Now, the 812 Superfast actually isn't arriving until 2019. This is a sort of a double-sided Q&A because lots of people have also been asking about the 812 Superfast. Uh, but back to the 488 Pista, I don't want to have to sell the Speciali to replace it for a Pista, mostly because I really do believe that as the name would suggest, the 458 Speciali truly is a special piece of kit. It's quite a significant piece of Ferrari history, being the last naturally aspirated V8. And because Ferrari is such a prominent brand in the automotive world, I think it's also quite an important piece of car history as well. Following on from that, 812 Superfast uh, still have the option on one, but it is looking to be a 2019 car. So I don't have a fixed date on that yet. When that will happen, I'm not entirely sure. Finally. Well, it feels like this journey has taken forever. Didn't help with the, it's actually being a challenge to reach the speed limit in that Persia. Nevertheless, Waze took me a very scenic route. Thank you, Waze. And uh, speaking of scenery, look at this place. This is my room view for the next few days at Le Castellet. Oh, wow. God, this is ultimate playground, isn't it? And to think, that just the other side of this building here is a fully fledged racing circuit. I mean, it's stupendous. So, more of that in the next few videos. Oh, look at this. Yes, please, starring. Mm -mm. Mr. James. Wow, I have a whole cake. I literally have an entire cake here, just for me. So, perfect place to prop up for the final question of the day. Since I put that question out this morning, we've had 508 questions. How are your plans to go racing coming along? Um, that's a funny one, that. So, there was some massive news on the horizon, like on the precipice of epicness. Um, I was this close to racing for Audi in their GT4 series. Um, it's a project that I couldn't talk about until it got signed off. And then the CEO of Audi left to go to Bugatti and the interim CEO 
basically pulled the plug on all of the projects that were being worked on at that time. One of them being me going racing for Audi. And it was going to be a dream come true. Uh, I, w I would have raced in the VLN series. So it would have been like Nürburgring 24 hour, things like that. Um, and the, the opportunities and content that we would have been able to provide to you guys, like, a, like an insight into the world of racing would have been incredible. There's so many intricate, crazy important details that, that determine the outcome of a race that I discover just don't get spoken about. And I think if these elements were put into context as to just how difficult something is, just how much precision is involved, how much engineering is involved, how much skill is involved, I think audiences would have a much greater appreciation for racing other than thinking, oh, it's just some guys going fast in a circle on a circuit. I can't stress enough how far removed from driving a road car, driving a race car is. It is night and day. And what I would have loved to have had the opportunity to do is bring you that knowledge and that experience. Like, as I stepped out of the car, I kind of relayed to you exactly what it was like, what I'm going through, the learning curves. Um, anyway, I'm not giving up on it. The racing dream is still very much in motion, but that was a massive stepping stone towards something fantastic, which it's now taken a few steps back. We're reevaluating, and hopefully we might be able to get another brand on board in future. So don't give up yet. There's still plenty of time for that to happen. As always, guys, thanks for watching, and I shall see you next time. Ciao.